I know a guy right now making good money, but I know he's living hand to mouth because his wife, they got a big house, just two of them. You're taking multiple trips a year. If she has an expectation of the lifestyle and how much money it's gonna cost, and you don't want to spend that much money in order to appease her, are y'all compatible? This is season one for the cool, calm, collected one. Tipping, I'm running at you, the emotional one. And we are the Tipping Point Podcast, resource for the black male's perspective. Tipping Point Podcast. For a lot of guys, you know, they don't get past the attraction level. And I want us to start looking, thinking about the analogy of the job analogy here or the job applicant analogy is you need to start seeing her looks as a resume. Just because you look good on paper does not mean that you interview well. Just because you look good on paper doesn't mean that you're competent to even do the job. Just because you look good on paper doesn't mean that you actually have those skills, right? You can actually misrepresent yourself, True. right? Even though what, what's on paper looks attractive, right? So just because she looks good doesn't mean that as a helpmate, she's competent in that role. Just because she looks physically good, right, doesn't mean that she is a good fit for you and where you're going. And so we talked about vetting to the ultimately not to, when we talk about vetting, we're not vetting to berate. We're not vetting to bash. We're not vetting to judge. We're trying to determine fit. And we discovered or we discussed a few weeks back that there's three components of fit. Attraction, connection, and what we're talking about tonight, compatibility, right? And I think when it comes to the attraction piece, the presentation, how does she present herself? And to pay close attention to things and understanding that what may be attractive short term may not be all that attractive long term. And it's important to be able to understand is this a beauty or an attraction that's going to last, right? Or am I just lusting after this woman? Connection. Black made a point in the last episode we had that I want to basically kind of sum that up with is if COVID decided it wanted to spin the block <laughs> and there, there were new strands of COVID that there wasn't a vaccination for and we had to quarantine again, the person that I'm dating, the person that I'm hanging out with, the person that I'm interested in, can we be quarantined during this period of time with nothing to do and still have a great time together? That's a real question. Right? Yeah. That determines connection right there. To me, you have a connection when you guys can hang out, enjoy each other's company. You find them interesting. They find you interesting. And there's nothing going on. Nothing wrong with doing things, having activities. I think you should do that. But I think it's also important, if not more important, that you determine on the front end, this is someone that I truly enjoy their company and they enjoy mine. To me, that's what a connection is. Once you've determined that, we have to talk about being compatible, what I call alignment. Why do you think that's important, bro? Um, I just... This is the granddaddy to me. Yeah, yeah, like... And I don't want to get into weighing three of them. We, we, I struggled with that when we talked about this several episodes ago. You, you, you struggle with what? With weighing, like, you know, you know... You challenge. Which one is more important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to say this one is pretty pretty substantial. This is to me this is the one that trips people up at the finish line. Yeah. Yeah. Um this is the final boss. <laughs> yes. Yes, cuz cuz really if you go sequentially the way we're delivering them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you get to this point, if there's no compatibility, then you almost instantly throw out the two. The In first two. It, almost. It, it undermines the two. Correct. The first two. Correct. Cuz now you're looking at them differently. Right. But Correct. in your game example, in some games, if you don't beat the final boss, 
you got to go all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why I say it's the final boss is because by the time you get to here, at this point, there's an emotional attachment to this person. Sure. So it's it's tough to just kind of rid yourself of this person. Sure. Y'all probably either not had sex by now. Y'all probably it, it's some stuff that's going on to where you're you're finding things that are challenging and and I'll make some points about this, but if worse comes to worst and y'all are unable to overcome some of those hurdles, it's a tough breakup because of what's been invested up to this point, the feelings you two have towards each other, maybe the attachment you have to people connected to that person. Like, it can be tough. Right. So I think that's why this is a biggie. Here, here's a here's a surface-level thought. You're, if you've established attraction and connection, you're going to still have differences. That was one of my points. I, that was my point I was going to make. Okay. Yes. You want to take it from here? Well, that's about to say, being compatible with Hold someone. On. Okay. <laughs> no, we do this. <laughs> For those listening, audibly get simulated <laughs> passing me the ball so that I can take the shot. Just because you're compatible does not mean that there won't be differences. So in many respects, the first two if you're when it comes to attraction, some of these things may not be negotiable, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to negotiate a person's presentation, right? Especially as someone that you just met or observing. Connection is hard to negotiate how we interact. That's 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 something that's more organic, right? I can't make you. Hey, I need you to laugh when I tell a joke here, right? It's it's either hey, leave me out of this. <laughs> But you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. some, like to me, I think this the the compatibility is some. There are some things that can be negotiated. Yeah. Right. Some things that's going to involve some compromise. But I think the problem that a lot of people do in dating, again, if there's no strategy, and I'm I'm just seeking your validation of me, we're not talking through some of these differences. Some of us aren't even being honest about where we differ on until an argument occurs. Sure. Right? Yeah. So I, I think what helps people in this area is there has to be a lot of communication. And when it comes to when it comes to the vetting process, when it comes to this compatibility business, the ultimate focus on this is really you. Okay, where are you going in life, right? How do you even know if this person is compatible? Like, where are you going? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's easy to determine if the applicant is a good culture fit because you understand your culture. You understand, you can articulate your culture. You understand what the, what the company is trying to achieve, how they want to achieve it, and does this person and their personality can they seamlessly integrate into our environment and be one, just one of many? Or are they going to stick out like a sore thumb? Right. Right? You have to understand who you are, where you're, you have to have a good understanding of self. If you don't, it's going to be tough to evaluate someone else and whether or not they fit you. Right? Yeah. So, Keep that in mind as we go. What I want to present and what we've been presenting is a template. Okay? It's not exhaustive. And some of these things may or may not even apply to you, but it serves as a template for you to properly vet and evaluate who you're involved with. Black, you got some thoughts about compatibility? Yeah, but it's it's kind of technical. When you were talking, it made me think about uh, an API. Okay. How you have like two different applications and you have to work to make those Ooh, two give, communicate. Give me that nerd talk. Give me that nerd talk. <laughs> Go ahead. But I'm that's what saying. came to my mind, an API, okay. like you have these two separate applications. Like, and like, you know, at work, you may have an application that you used to and then somebody from the sales team gets sold some new application that they want to bring into the environment and they don't go through any of the vetting process. Right. And you have to try to make it work. Right. 
through right. an interface. Absolutely. The interface ends up becoming a common ground mm -hmm. between these two systems, right? Yeah. That's where they converge. Data is shared. Value is, is exchanged. Mm -hmm. That serve to me, that interface, look at you, you look at me pulling that analogy out of there. <laughs> Can is I, can I interrupt y'all? What y'all getting too nerdy? Let, 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 let me. This let is me, where you live. What you talking no, about? No, no, no. I've been. This is I've your been, background. Yeah, yeah. But don't judge me by my past. <laughs> it's your present too. I, I, my pre-pod talk <laughs> hold on, was really nerdy too. Hold on. Hold, can can I offer you something? Can I offer you something? Yes or no? Yes. So I remember years ago, there was a photo editing app that caught my attention. It was attractive to me. Mm -hmm. It connected with me because of some of the features it had, but it was not compatible with iPhone. Couldn't find it in the app store. I'm gonna throw up. What do I do now? <laughs> it was not compatible? It was not compatible. It, it, that, you couldn't that app use at it. The time was, I, you couldn't use it. Couldn't use it. Couldn't can use we it. use that as our tech example, please? People can resonate with that. Not these APIs and these interfaces and these, these meetings. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> I think you're underestimating some people in our audience, too. Continue on, man. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus. We're going to talk agile next. I mean, what are we doing here? Well. No. <laughs> well, since well, you brought it up. <laughs> right. So my, the point here is, to the point about there being differences, finding common ground in these differences. There's going to be There's going to be some... Compromise. There's going to, have to be y'all have to meet in the middle. Someone has both of you going to have to give a little here, give a little there. So let's talk about some of these. So the first one that that I had at the list I sent you guys when it comes to compatible, are we compatible? Is religion Huge, values great place to start? Religion and values. Um, again, you hear especially in in Christianity, be not ye unequally yoked the unbelievers, right? And now a lot of people are using that term even outside the scope of faith uh, as it pertains to dating someone on your level or whatnot. But strictly r religion, and I have slash values. You said that's important. Why yeah. is that important? I, I'm a firm believer in anyone who hears this that they should consider being a part of something bigger than themselves. Okay. For most people, that points to religion, faith, spirituality. I know you don't like those. So, I don't have a problem with spirituality. I just think we we use it loosely. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So with, with those things, it provides ground-level foundational principles. Okay. That you make the choice to abide by or not. Okay. The, the easy concern here is... What if you invite a woman in who's got a totally different set of beliefs? To me, on the surface, that's that's you're not compatible. Now, mm -hmm. go ahead. Now, could that be the end all? That's up to you and your relationship. But the one thing I know is that is going to make things difficult. Okay. But hey, we've all been in relationships before. What relationship has not been difficult? Right. I guess my question to that is, how can you quick, where, where can, what would make you say, obviously, obviously that they don't share the same faith or believe in the same God sure. or believe in the same religious practice, right? What makes you say that's not compatible? What specifically about that? Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm qualified to say this because I'm limited in my purview of different faiths or religions, but I'm just, I, in the faith that I choose, marriage is structured one way. Again, disclaimer, we're catering this to people looking for long-term relationships. This right. is this is kind of the end goal once you establish that, right? Sure, sure. Um, for me, in my faith, I see how marriage is structured. Everything I do dating leading to that sets me up for that end goal. Mm. But now if I've got a partner, a woman, who has got a totally different roadmap, I don't, I don't see how she I don't see how I can waver from that. 
And if I do, what does that say about my commitment to my own faith? So you, so is it possible that y'all will eventually clash? I'm not going to say, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're definitely going to clash. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got two people of the same faith, you're still going to clash. Sure. But it's almost a guarantee that if you of different faiths or one person is agnostic, they don't even have a faith. Correct. Correct. That you're going to clash eventually. Yes. Okay. Here's the key point. You got to have some type of reference point to where both of you can agree and meet. If there's an inconsistency there, I don't know how you get to success with that. Mm. Walker, Walker. Let, let, let me some let, let me put this in uh, sports terms. Okay. Okay. You know I love my sports. You and I are on the same basketball team, right? You trying to get a chip. All I want is MVP. I don't care if we get out of the first round of the playoffs. I want that trophy. I want to hoist it up at midcourt. I don't know when people will see it if we're not in the playoffs. <laughs> It's not. I think they. I think they hand. I think it's a separate ceremony. <laughs> okay. It's not okay. even. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a press conference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah something yeah, like that. Like KD yeah. did that year. He didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But like, we're on a team team chemistry perspective. We're not compatible. I'm in the gym working for individual goals. Mm. You're in the gym working for more team oriented goals. Right. We're not going for the same thing. We're not compatible. Mm. Okay. Is that a good example? That works. That we're, works. We're gonna. What, what question did you have? I basically asked: Is it a likelihood for you two to clash yes. eventually? You and I are gonna clash, Kyrie. Curious who who is who at this point? <laughs> <laughs> now that you're throwing out names, um, did you did you have any more? Did you have anything more? I, 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 you're cooking. Do you want to? I'm good. I'm you good. good. <laughs> Black you. Really want to stay here all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Black. You, you, you probably want to stay there based on what I was thinking about. Okay. It's like, it's, as far as like religious differences mm -hmm. and you and your partner, what came to my mind is like if you're in a situation where you're on life support and y'all may have two religious, different religious beliefs mm -hmm. as far as like, do we believe in like, Putting someone like if you if you're like terminal, do you force them to stay alive and suffer, or do you make the decision to end their life? This is a good point. This is, good. This is a good point. The, that's what I, came I to my mind. Is, I think his was better than mine. This is a good point. So like if y'all don't share the same different beliefs, perspective, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like his. I'm, yeah. I'm plus one and on his. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that means either. You want to use an NBA analogy with that no, one? I think I've, I think okay. I've exhausted okay. those. <laughs> But that's what came to my mind. Like, if y'all yeah. have two different belief systems and your life is on the line and you're suffering, you, your, your family, like, even with the religion, like, your family may still have that same faith, but the decision is with your partner. Right. And your family, your partner may have two different ways they want to handle the situation. Mm hmm Right. Um, that's a good, that's a good example of where the differences in religion can cause potential problems down the road. Um, I remember dating a girl and attractive girl. I, we knew each other from school before I met my wife, obviously. And we reconnected after college and we went out a few times. Cool. Con good connection. Always a cool person. We enjoy being around each other. Cool. But as we were getting just conversation, even though we were of the same faith, it got on a subject of healing and sickness. And there was a, she had a different belief than I did about it. And then we had other conversations that stemmed around religion. I began to see, yeah, this ain't going to work. This is not going to work because what's so tough about the religion argument is oftentimes people believe like people are attracted to the fact that a person have, they have a devotion to something, whether it's of a different faith or whatnot. The problem comes into play is that 
religion provides a template for our value system. Our values are derived from our faith that we practice with one another, right? With, with from our faith, right? So how I our, our, how I make decisions in life comes from my value system. So if my value systems come from my faith and we have a different faith, granted there will be some overlap, but if we believe different things and they're fueled by our value system, it's going to be tough in this area to compromise. Right? Yeah. So if we if 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 something is going on in my body and I'm I want you to pray and get an agreement with me for healing about it, but you believe that sickness is God's way of perfecting us or whatever. Again, how are we going to get on the same page about my illness right. for teaching purposes on I'm healthy. But what I'm saying is, you know what I mean? Yeah. These are things you are ha- going to have to consider when you're dating someone or involved with someone who doesn't share the same value system as you. Another thing to consider is what are you going to teach your children? Right. The two of you may figure it out, but what are the children going to learn? What are you expecting them to pick up? Right? Because if, if one person's doing one thing and the other kid is doing the other thing, are they going to grow up confused? Yes. Because two people are doing two different things? So these are things that you have to consider when it comes to compatibility because as to you, you said this earlier, this is bigger than you if you're coming together with somebody, right? You're talking legacy building, so it's important that y'all be one band, one sound when it comes to instilling values into your children. So to me, this is one of these areas where it's, it's not a lot of wiggle room to reach a compromise. Right. You kind of are who you are in terms of your values, right? Sometimes our values can change and evolve over time, but they don't change that much. Right. What you got? Or should they? Yeah, with that conversation, you made me think of, say, you get married and you have kids, Y'all better be on the same page when it comes to whether or not you want to vaccinate your kids or not. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Discipline your kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? You grew up being disciplined. The other person did not. How are we going to deal with? How are we going to deal with that? Right. Yeah. Well, no. We're we're going to go too deep. This this is. Yeah. yeah, This is good. These, These are things. And these are things you need to be having conversation. Like the last thing you want to have is <laughs> you get presented with the situation and then you got to talk about it. Right. You want to talk about this on the front end. Yeah. Here's the thing, Walker. You're not going to cover everything. You're not. Right. You're not. There's but, a book in here um, that uh, that I introduced. You remember that book? It's right over your shoulder. Book. It's right back there. Yeah. 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 Um. But even that doesn't cover everything. Sure, but it, it gets you it gets you close. At least it gets you talking. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm a fan of the book, and I think the book helps, and it's better than not doing anything at all. Correct. And being caught up in the first two elements. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, again, it's what we're giving is a template. True. We're giving a template, so we understand we're not going to catch everything, but some of these things we're talking about major people don't even think about until it happens. Right. And that, by this point, you didn't have the wedding, cut the cake. You didn't came back from your honeymoon, been married several months. <laughs> and then you're finally dealing with this. Oh yeah. Tragic. Right. The second one that I want to talk about, see, I, I got a list here. The second one I want to talk about, Ooh, convictions. Oh my gosh. This, Oof. this, this, this is in the area of, Truly like your boundaries. You may have personal boundaries and things for yourself. Again, as I alluded to, compatibility doesn't mean that you guys are going to see eye to eye on everything. So compatibility here to me, gentlemen, does not mean that this person shares every conviction you share. Right? Yeah. However, the question here is, does this person respect your convictions, thus respecting your boundaries. Thoughts on that? Jeez. 
that's heavy. <laughs> but yeah. but it, the respect word is what jumps out jumps out at me. Yeah. And without giving them too much of what men want, <laughs> I think my fellas listening should prioritize that term over anything. Mm. But respecting my convictions, it, bro. It, it goes both ways, too. It really does. Do you respect her convictions? Ah. It goes both ways. goes both ways. She got some convictions. She got a hard line in the sand on some things. Do you respect that? Just because I respect it doesn't mean that I will abide by it. That doesn't mean you respect it, in my opinion. I'm listening. So what I mean is... When I respect, by the way, you, we, we have, we have, uh, we have boundaries, even in our relationship. If I don't respect those boundaries, what's the likelihood I'm going to disrespect the boundary? Uh, I see what you mean. Okay. Okay. What? Right? Yeah. yeah. If I respect it, I don't cross that line. Uh, I don't try you. I, I don't, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. What's the, li- so what I'm saying is, again, for example, you and I, let's just say, let's just, I'll use my, myself as, let's say I am, I am, I used to have a, an addiction to alcohol, right? So we go get something to eat. You respect my new boundary of, I don't want to go to a bar, right? right? There's some, so there's a really good restaurant that serves good food, but its main thing is that it's a bar. They just so happen to serve food from the bar. Right. Right? So if you respect my boundary, you're not going to take me to that establishment. Well, we can take out. Or that. <laughs> but you understand my point. Yes. If we're going, if we're dining in, right. you're going to take me somewhere where, yeah, they may sell alcohol, but it's not in your face like this bar would be. Right. That's serving food. And now I got to deal with the temptation. Yeah. You're going to take me somewhere where... I, even though you love that bar, you drink, you don't have the conviction I have, but because you respect the relationship, that's a compat. Okay, I can make the adjustment. We'll go somewhere else. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? No, that, that's very. That's important. what respect in this regard means. Do they respect your conviction and your boundaries? Do you respect theirs? Mm-hmm. While he thinks on that, what do you think, Black? You had me think about like a situation where, say, your partner has a falling out with a parent or something, their parent or something like that. It's like from now on, we're not discussing them, we're not dealing with them. And you have to, even though you had a relationship with them also, you have to respect her and not go go beyond what she feels is comfortable like communicating with them. So you have to respect her boundaries as far as like not dealing with her parents, even though you had a relationship with them prior to that. That's kind of messy. Um, I would, I would, I, here's the thing. You remember I said some things have to be negotiated. Yeah. This is one we probably have to talk through because why is it, why does she not want to talk to her parents? Uh, now it could be a legitimate reason, sure. mm-hmm. right? But without context, I have questions because if, if I have a relationship with them and I think they're they're your folks, the great people, why do you not want to talk to them all of a sudden? Is this something that will blow over? Y'all will work through it? Yeah. Or is this as permanent? And if it is permanent, like what are we what are we dealing with? Right. So I know a lot of people, well, not a lot, but there were situations just based off political followings, people fell out with family members. Mm. And then you had to like try to navigate nav- navigate that situation when you're. Let's put a pin here, because one of my things is family. Okay, we'll pick that one back up. Um, because there's some things that I want to, I want us to glean from the other person in terms of how they manage their relationships with other people. And that's something you uh, you need to be aware of early on. Because I know a lot of guys. Do you fall like, out with, do you just fall out with people? I mean, a lot of and guys. And over what? A lot of guys want to know like, hey, what's your relationship with your mom? Mm. Yeah. Just people, men, women, like how do you manage your current relationships that existed prior to me? How do you manage those? That impacts compatibility. Are we jumping ahead? 
we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Okay. We're gonna talk me, about that in a minute. But that, but, but Black gave an example that I was like, let's let's table that for a later example. But respecting the convictions, I think you I think your example put it pretty clear to me. Like, yeah. I can't, I can't, I don't have anything to support that. I, I believe in what you said because those those things come up. I will say this, and this is where this is where I like to test my limits, right, with our audience. Um. You know, there, there, there's conversations about even, even sexual boundaries. Let me preface this by saying I believe that there's benefits to practicing abstinence by not only women, but men. However, I understand that in our culture, our society, that sexual relationships have outside of marriage, not only marriage, but outside of even a committed relationship has been normalized, unfortunately. Hookup culture is real. It is my belief that there are certain, even, even with the, the advancements in medicine, birth control, whatever the case, there are certain things that condom can't, there are certain consequences a condom can't protect you from. There are certain consequences birth control and protection can't protect you from as a woman, right? Our, I've already talked about some of the consequences for men in terms of being disciplined sexually and how a lot of men have to work on discipline for the first time now that they have a family. They have the love of their life. They have kids. They have something to lose, and how that's a bad place to then start working on yourself when you should be working on yourself prior to that point. But for the woman, here's something that I don't think gets talked about enough. Because what happens is you have women who, let's say, let's say they're getting closer to God and now they want to abstain sexually. They want to honor God with their body. Here's the problem. Here's a challenge, and this is why I encourage abstinence in a lot of our sisters. Especially as you get older, it's going to be tough finding a guy who's going to respect those boundaries. It's going to be even tougher if there's no precedent or history of you enforcing said boundary prior to this guy. This is why the whole topic of body count and your sexual history and past matters to the guy because to that guy, it's backwards. If men, if, if you, if there were men in your past that to this day you don't respect, they were narcissists, they were toxic, they're whatever the case may be, yet you gave them access to your body. And in some cases, some cases, gave that man the ultimate honor of bearing his children for him. Here comes a man who you say is better than those men in terms of character, in terms of how he values you, how he treats you, yet you're making him do something you didn't ask men from your past to do. For that guy to respect that boundary, that doesn't make a lot of sense to him, right? right? It's usually when I have good credit, I get a lower interest rate, right? <laughs> right? So my point here is, ladies, you may find someone who will respect that boundary, and congratulations if you do. But don't be surprised if the men you want look at that, st that, that boundary, that conviction, and you lose them. Don't be surprised because that man is saying there's inconsistency with you. That's not fair to me that now all these standards are being applied when they weren't applied to men you don't even see as on my level. Right. Right? But in her defense, that's an incompatibility based off of her religious beliefs. Sure. You're just saying you need to be prepared for that. You need to be prepared for it. Gotcha. Okay. 
I'm not saying don't have them. <laughs> right, right. I'm saying what we're not. See, the Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death, meaning there's a consequence to your decision. Right. This is a very realistic consequence that a birth control and a condom won't protect you from. Gotcha. I see what you mean now. That's what I'm talking about there. Yeah. That's why I'm encouraging sisters, don't, if you, if you, at least be consistent. If you're going to require a re- commitment before you you have sex with someone, you need to do that consistently across the board. Mm. That's why I'm against this whole having a whole phase and hookup culture and all that. You're setting you're setting yourself up for bad returns down the road. That's not a good look. Now you want to be serious and now you want to you want to be, you know what I mean? Now but but in your past that's not going to make sense to the guy. Generally speaking, that's not going to make sense yeah. to him. If it's her past, it's not fair to her. What was that? If it's her past, it's not fair to her. It's not? Past matters, don't get me wrong, but in the context of what you're delivering, if she's offered sexual benefits to guys before, you're saying it's only right for her to continue to offer those for any guy that comes after that. No. What I'm saying is if the guy is looking at this logically and if he understands your past, there are men who she gave access to her body, but she's requiring a higher standard out of him. He may not be cool with that. Right. Oh, okay. 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 I see what you mean now. Okay. Yeah. And some people may hear that. I already led with, I I believe you should practice abstinence. Right. Regardless of where you at. Because this is the right man is going to honor that. But there's a consequence, Gat. True. You're going to lose some. There's a consequence. Yeah. But I'd argue, and, I'd argue and, to say the one that, and we, that, will, that will sustain that or that doesn't matter to him, there could you, be a lot there. Do you like him, though? Probably not. Th- there's plenty of guys Probably who— not, because he's he working, he working at the post office. Whatever the case <laughs> may be. But I'm saying the guy you like. Right, yeah. The guy you yeah. want to be with, he may have a problem with that. Oh, I took that way, way left. That's what I'm saying. I'm thinking is a woman going to... Okay. I, sorry. I was going another direction. Okay. I see where you're going now. Okay. Right. Okay. So, we, we, again, we're talking convictions. Yeah, some, some but most I'm, guys are going to dip. Yeah. But I'm warning you, don't be mad when he dips. Keep your convictions. I'm right. glad you got them, yeah. finally. Right? Right. Glad you got them. Better late than never. But there's a consequence. Yeah. The dating pool is a little bit smaller now. It's a consequence. Right. Okay? You woke up in your 30s and you realize, I need to, I, I need to protect my... Okay, great. But if you got kids and you want him to wait, he going to look at you a little funny. Be prepared for it. Right. It may not happen, and if it doesn't, great. But if it does happen, I'm just saying. Yeah. That's all. Okay, what's the next one? Let's see here. That's that's a tough one. Some that people gonna have a talk, one. but people have a problem with that. But I I listen to dudes. I know how dudes think. Don't be surprised. Career choices. Career choices impact compatibility. Yes. Yes. Career choices can definitely uh, affect whether the two of you are compatible. Like, based on her career, if y'all want to have a family with her career, inter- like, interfere with y'all making... Dynamic. A- In other words, I work 60 hours a week. She works 60 hours a week. Does this work for us? Yeah. It may work. But it may not. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it right. won't. I know couples like that. So. Some couples, it works fine. Other couples, not so much. Right. But this becomes a conversation. I also career trajectory. Mm. So maybe things are great now, but you already know I'm trying to be an executive, which means when you get to executive level, you get to upper management level, there's a bigger demand on your time and energy that wasn't pulling on you when the two of you met. Right. Mm. 
So if I'm going to go for this goal here, I'm pursuing this thing, I'm on my purpose right now, right? There will come a day where I may not be around as much to help the kids with their homework, to be at every game. Are you okay with that? Does that work with you? Or do you expect me to be just as hands-on and present in the home as you? Right. And I know I have this on me to pursue this thing. What you got? This resonates with me because this is not something my wife and I talked about beforehand. I made a lot of assumptions. I, you know, my wife was in dental school when, you know, I think, yeah, when we got married, she's still in dental school. But anyway, um, didn't, didn't know what it was going to be like. Fast forward, things started to change when she decided to open her own business. That was a lot of demand. I was not ready for that. This goes in the category of Gat did that, so hopefully you won't have to go through that. Okay. And I just want to, I just want to augment that by saying these are important because my wife always had those aspirations. We just never talked about them. Mm. Did we have opportunities to? A hundred percent. When you look back on it in a retrospect, it was do you, was there a reason why y'all didn't, or just in the moment? What, what, why didn't y'all discuss it? It was it was due to a lot of immaturity on my behalf. Uh, I was power tripping. I'm not gonna lie, because at this at this point, I was handling everything. I was more than capable. I didn't see things going any other way. I was very closed minded, because I'm like, yeah, she's doing that. That I mean, that has potential to be great but this is where we're at right now. This is the way it's always going to be. So with that mentality, I didn't, I didn't, it was hard for me to develop a lot of value into talking about what her career trajectory was going to be. A lot of pride there. Mm -hmm. But going back to compatibility, what also wasn't, (laughs) wasn't discussed was I came in with the notion of I'm the man I'm going to support us financially. So if because I have, that's what she was doing. Yeah. If I have that expectation, it seems bad to say now, but in my mind it was, well, why do I need to ask about hers? I got this. Wasn't ready when things started changing. <laughs> was not. Mm. So I I think career trajectory is very important. Also, one thing I thought of when you said that is. There are a lot of men out here who don't want their woman, their woman to out earn them. My, my wife out earns me and it ain't close. (laughs) Okay. I wasn't okay with that. That was an internal battle. She got a lot of heat for unnecessary heat for me because I didn't know how to process that. I didn't realize that was as important to me as it was until it started happening. She got to talk through those things on the forefront. She got a lot of undertone from you? She got a lot of undertone. A lot of unmanaged undertone. That's an inside joke that happened off pre-pod. <laughs> that you uh, may have made out Yeah, the black just inserted there. Um, <laughs> Make sure you subscribe if to you knew then, If you know then, <laughs> if you knew then what you know now, how would you have handled that today? Oh, like, gosh. how would you have handled that if you had another chat? Ch- I'll sh- crack at it. I would have, um, I would have taken the time to ask more about what she sees for her future professionally. Seriously. Because, because she, like I said, she knew the whole time. She did. But if I don't ask that question, and and I'm not going to speak for her, but there may have been times that she may have tried to tell me, and I was just, okay, whatever. So if she told you, what would you have done with that information? At that point in my life? I'm saying knowing, knowing now, if you knew then what you know now. Oh, gosh. How would you process that? Oh, gosh. It would have been rough on the forefront. Right. But I would have definitely thanked her for sharing that with me. Okay. And you're saying my maturity level is where it is now? I, I, I guess if you had taken the, if you had taken the, the, if you had the presence of mind to say, hey, where does your, where is your career taking you? Yeah. And determine what does that mean for, for us as a family, us as a, like, that would have, that would have been rough on the front end. What would you've done with that? Oh, I, I would have, I would have shared with her what my desires were. Okay. 
Now, I wouldn't make it ironclad. I wouldn't say this is scripture, but I would at least offer that to put on the table so that we can have the opportunity to figure it out. Okay. So you so you would have tried this is one of these areas where I think there there can be some com- there can be some common ground, I think. Oh yeah. But but I think it's healthy for me to say, "Hey, look, I was coming to this thing thinking that I was going to support us. This is my experience. We're, yeah. we're, we're going to get into role clarity in the next one for okay. sure. For okay. sure. But, but, but I think just me saying that would have helped both of us. Because now we got an opportunity to unpack it and talk about how we're going to go forward. Walker, I've talked about it on here before. It's been a while. But I had a hard time when we had to sell that first house. You remember, you remember my example of me planting the flag? Like, this is mine. I got this. Mm-hmm. And now we got to, we, hold on, we about to move? Because you're working on the other side of town? Well, no, 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 no. Why can't we stay here? Like, I had a hard time with that. It was so mm. much bigger than selling the house. It was a lot of my pride that I felt like was being attacked. Now. Because you got that. Yeah, that was on me. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it's so important. It, if I had to do all over again, I would have put all that on the table. Because mm. then maybe my pride gets an opportunity to be massaged a little bit and something good comes out of this instead of me feeling attacked. That didn't help anything. Yeah. Now, spoiler alert, fast forward X amount of years later, <laughs> once I worked through these things, I realized, hey, my wife don't even look at it like that. She like, well, what's mine is hers and vice versa. She ain't tripping off that like I am. Oh, for real? Oh, okay. On to the next. But she felt that way in the beginning, though. You just didn't realize it? Me? No, she felt the way, like, what's mine? Is oh, yours, yeah, yours. yeah, yeah, yeah. My she was always it. on that page. Yeah, you yeah. Just, you had Dude, to... and I'm sorry, Walker. I'm staying here a lot, and I may get emotional on this, but... You're the emotional one. So. Okay. <laughs> as, as later on in our marriage, when we started unpacking this, like, really getting to the root of this after many hours of therapy... Um, one of the things my wife told me that really, really just cemented her on my heart was, Ronnie, you were with me before any of this. My future success never mattered to you. You were in it for me when I was grinding to get to, you know, get to where I am now. And there were things that happened well, it's essentially support, my support for her business. That I, I lost sight of things that I was doing to contribute. I know you remember some of them. Yeah, IT stuff, yeah. APIs. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but um, Nerdy stuff, you know. To hear from her, like, how much that meant to her and how it made it easy for her to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm rocking with this dude to the end. Mm. Essentially, let me translate for the young people out here. You were with me shooting in the gym. You know what I mean? It meant a lot for me to hear my wife say that. And so back to your point, and I keep going back to it, we could have handled that earlier. We could have gotten all those thoughts out. And who knows what what kind of impact that would have had on me. So my my encouragement there or consideration, my request to consideration for anybody thinking about that, have that conversation, but be honest about what you want. Doesn't mean you'll get it, but there may be a blessing on the other end of it especially when it comes to career trajectory. Sure. I agree. Well said, actually. Thank you. Um, Every 10 episodes, I give you one bar. Three. <laughs> um, gender roles, expectations. Oh, my gosh, Walker. We don't have enough time. This is usually fueled by upbringing. Tradition. No, just up. Your, what is your upbringing? In other words, what did you grow up seeing your father do? Right. What did your mom do? Right? A lot of that shapes our expectations of what's likely to happen when we start our own family, our own situation. This is something that, this is one of the areas where I, I, I introduce the idea of premarital counseling. Because usually a good counselor will take you down this this road of expectations and then begin to talk about what what you observed in your upbringing as a child. What did mom do? What did dad do? What were you trained to do, right? And the idea is that it should spark dialogue between you two to determine, okay, this is what happened in my home. This is what happened in your home. What is going to happen in our home? 
and you got to build it from the ground up and you got to talk about it. You got to talk about everything because what tends to happen is I expect you to do something or I expect you to be okay with me doing or not doing something. And then when we come together, all of a sudden there's a problem that comes out of left field because of an expectation not being met. Thoughts? <laughs> all <of> the above. <laughs> right. The, the, but but the, I, I think the beauty of it is I think I think about our situation. Yeah, you. I mean, you described it to the T. I came in thinking it was going to be one way, but the thing is, I had to realize my wife is not wired like my mom is. She's not mm. similar qualities, but then I mean they're wired the same way. Right. Um, but what the beauty of it is now, what we've developed, is unlike her parents, unlike mine, but it's uniquely ours. Hence. Yeah. Another cog of compatibility. But we had to work for that. Communication, too. Yeah, I mean, you had communication to talk through. is the biggest thing you here. You had to talk through that one. Yeah. And it's tough, Walker. Don't make it sound easy to these folks. I was. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm turned right now. Got it. <laughs> Black over there thinking, oh, this is easy. All I got to do is talk. No. <laughs> what else is involved with it? Listening. Okay. And understanding and what praying, Lord. Okay, what am I missing? I don't know. You tell me. You said it ain't easy. What all the all the components of it, buddy? <laughs> Those are all the ones I could think of off yeah. the top of my head. Black, you That's got thoughts. A good one though, Walker. Black, you got. I mean, again, you you now we're in this thing where again you have feminism. You have men who are tr like do what do you okay. Is she going to cooking? Even though she works like you work, you expect her to do all the cooking, all the cleaning, all the all the stuff in the house. Because in from based on your upbringing, what you've been taught, what you what you value, this is what the man does, this is what the woman does, even though both of y'all work. Right. Is he? Is she? Compatible based on your expectation, even after you talk. And this is and this is the line in the sand that gets that gets, you know what I mean? Are we compatible based on our expectations of how the logistics of our household is going to go? Goodness gracious, this is so big. And I, I think these are one of the things that counseling will help you with. But you know what's crazy, Walker? All these are connected. Mm -hmm. That's what that's so genius about your outline here. All these are connected mm -hmm. because what if there's a conviction, yeah, attached to a gender role? One hundred percent. What if I have a trauma that deals with the way my parents did X? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is Walker. This is major. Yeah. Can I well, tell you some Caesar Walker? You're a national treasure. <laughs> Thank you, Gatry. Thank you, Gatry. That was that was nice of you. <laughs> Black, you have any thoughts on this? <laughs> no, just based off what uh, Gat said, what came to mind was that people may have to change how they feel about gender roles and just understand that the gender roles are unique to each relationship based on what those individuals are, like, willing to do and compromise on. There's no set... There's no set gender roles in relationships. It just depends on what those two individuals decide is right. best for their relationship. I will say this. I will say this on to add to that black. Some things, there's some things are going to be more clear cut than others. Right? Just based on the man and how he is, based on the woman, how there's just some things are obvious what the woman's going to do better versus what the man's going to do. Other areas are going to be kind of gray. Right. There's going to be some gray areas to me. I think because, see, we never had to sit down. Who's going to cut the grass? That's kind of you see what I'm saying. Like, like yeah. who's you know what I mean? Who's going to do my daughter's hair? I may help. But who's going to take the lead in terms of what her hair is going to look like? I can do one one thing. My wife does hair. 
Oh. For grown adults. Yeah. So who's going to do our daughter's hair? That, that, that cutting, th those are obvious. Yeah. Dishes, laundry, that's a little gray. Not for me. That's woman's work. Well, right now you're doing it because you know. <laughs> Mrs. Black. <laughs> right now you're doing all of that because you live by yourself. <laughs> and but, but and she's going to intuitively know that, which means when y'all come together, y'all got to talk about that. To it's going to become gray. To Black's point, <laughs> I came in with that. Yeah. How, how quickly did you change, though? I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I got to give it to my wife, though. It wasn't until we started having kids that we had that conflict. For sure. What y'all did up to that point? She, I mean, she did all the, she did all the woman's work. But it was, it was never, it was never discussed. Right. It was assumed. Even I think on her part. Here's the thing. Remember, I said this in the beginning. What makes this work is if you are evaluating yourself right along with this process. That's key. You were not doing that. Right. Not at all. Not even close. So you didn't have the frame of mind to determine where is she going and if we're even going in the same direction. Dude, I was caught off guard Yeah, when she told me she was overwhelmed after we had our first kid. What are you overwhelmed about, woman? Exactly. <laughs> As I'm sitting on the recliner wondering <laughs> where dinner is. <laughs> Why this remote don't work? My wife is doing everything, bro. But, yeah. But it was just like... I had a hard time when my wife asked me to start cooking. I had a hard time with that. I grew up watching my mama cook. Right. 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 Absolutely. Did you want me to go in there? Now, here's the thing. Now, it's a little different for you because you got married. But if you don't want to cook, <laughs> the beauty of this is that on the front, again, we're vetting. She needs you to cook. I don't want to cook. Now, depending on how important she is to your life, you may have to revisit that. Right. Like, but if you don't want to do something, this is the time to figure out say if it. you want to do say it or not. Betting. Don't say it after you put that ring on. That yeah, thing. this is this is gonna save you. This is gonna save you money. It's gonna save you embarrassment. If you don't want to do it now, you need to have the conversation. Now, yes. On the front end. Okay? Money management styles. Ooh. One person wants to save. The other person wants a lifestyle. One Only person, work. one person Only wants to I invest. Here is compromise, bro. This is the one person wants to invest. The other person wants to take trips. Two checking accounts or one? That's part of the conversation yes, too. Yes. Listen, all these, all, all these things, are factors of compatibility. Are you compatible? <laughs> are y'all compatible here? You've been you you have been you have been progressing through life. You've been able to sustain yourself. You know there was a there was a a, a video that went viral about a woman. Uh, she was on a podcast based out of Atlanta. And you may have saw this, Black. She was talking about the fact that men who make 50K a year shouldn't date. If you're making $50,000, don't date. I'm, I'm just being for real. You're not ready to date. Again, I'm with you. When you're not right. ready to date. You're not ready to date because courtship costs. Okay. Everything costs. Okay. You can go for 22 walks in the park. Eventually, Shorty is going to need a sip of something. She's going to be thirsty. <laughs> this not. bottle of water is $3 in Atlanta. Let's not play. So if you don't have any expendable cash, don't date. And whatever that looks like for you, you might only make 50000 but you live in a shoe. And now you got expendable cash. Or get you a bottom of the barrel that's going to date you when you have no money. If she doesn't have that expectation, and I'm going to tell you this right now, enjoy it while it lasts because eventually you're going to want to run because she doesn't stretch you. She doesn't make you the man that you need to become. She allows you to be the stagnant dude in the same jeans for days. You know what I'm saying? Be cutting up. I'm you talk about me. So you're saying teachers, policemen, firefighters should not date. Forever single. Wow. <laughs> yeah, she said it. Wow. Right? But what she, what I gathered from that is the assumption is that if you're making 50K, even though that's right around the average of what the average person makes in, in this country, you're broke. 
Right. Meaning you can't afford a certain lifestyle she wants to live by proxy of this relationship. So off the bat, as I'm listening to that, I'm hearing someone who doesn't truly understand that it's possible to really live comfortably off of 50K if you manage yes. your money Bro, I'll say, correctly. I wasn't making 50K when I got my first house. I wasn't making 50K. That's straight up. Right. You need right. both. You but, know what I mean? Like, but if you're trying to go to if you if you're trying to go to Ocean Prime, what is that? A very expensive restaurant. Is it called Ocean Prime now? Oh, oh God. I always oh. called it Ocean. Ocean Ocean is in Birmingham, right? Yeah, but th there's an Ocean about? Prime in other other oh, okay. other cities. More on that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying some of these expensive restaurants. If you're trying to go there every week, Ooh. You you just I know a guy right now making good money, making good money, but I know he's living hand to mouth because his wife got them. They got a big house, just two of them. But all this square footage, you're taking multiple trips a year. There's a lifestyle, all right? Lifestyle, right? So a woman like that, even though you're making good money, you're going to feel financial pressure all the time because you got to keep having these experiences for her. Right? You're just a tool. You are a means to a certain outcome and lifestyle. And most men don't live like that. Right. Right. <laughs> most men don't live like that. A lot of men are really frugal. You, you, you see men, you come into that house, you know, you're you probably different, Black, but you come into that house, TV, couch, a picture here, maybe. Like, rip, men are, we, we need all that. We don't, we're not doing all of that. No. You just described my house. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying <laughs> is, but what I'm saying is, is that if she has an expectation of the lifestyle and how much money it's gonna cost, you can even be making the money is my point, but that don't mean you want to spend it all. Right, right. It doesn't mean you want to be hand to mouth. So if she expects to live a certain lifestyle and you don't want to spend that much money, have that much coming out every month in order to appease her, have a certain experience that you personally, you yourself don't even care about, are y'all compatible? Mm. Yeah, one thing I be peeping out is what kind of car they drive. Yeah. Do they have an expensive import? Or do they have some domestic that doesn't have a lot of maintenance? Right. How are they dressed? This goes back, this goes back to the attraction thing again. If it's designer, 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 designer. Nothing wrong with designer. Nothing wrong with Timu. <laughs> But guess who's gonna, guess who they're expecting to? Right. How much is that coming out of the account every month? And you try to save, you trying to invest, you trying to, you trying to get on some new new investment opportunities. You trying to you trying to grow your money and more. So the question is here is it's possible for y'all to connect. It's possible for her to be obviously she looks good. But is she a bill? Mm. Is she an asset or a liability here? Because now, because of her and her expectations, more money is coming out of your account. And it's difficult for you to just build. It's difficult for you to, to, to get to that next level financially because you have a lifestyle to maintain. You have to live on this certain side of town. Now you can get there eventually, but we got to go there now. Right. Are y'all compatible? Children. Oof. <laughs> Goodness gracious. We were really going to Gosh. <laughs> uh, okay. What you want to do? 
I have no idea. What time? I was seven to five. Yeah, I had several. Children, family. I already did. I dealt with lifestyle already. We kind of talk lifestyle. So children, family, stage of life. Let me deal with stage of life. You two can want the same things, but not want them at the same time. And that's okay. It's okay, but it also means you're probably not compatible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's absolutely okay. But ladies, if he says, yeah, I want to be married. Yeah, I want kids. You know what he didn't say? I want to be married and have kids with you. I want to be married and have kids with you soon. He didn't say that. Get, yeah, I want a G-Wagon. Does that mean I'm going to go tomorrow, next year, and get a G-Wagon? All right. All right. There's a difference between intention versus wish. True. Okay. You can want the same things. And you may even want them with each other. But if you are on a deadline and he is just chilling, taking his time, and you want more now, y'all not compatible. True. If you good where you are and she wants more now and you're not ready, y'all not compatible, even though you want the same thing. The timing of where you are. You can be a guy who just got divorced. Probably not interested in jumping back in anything serious. You meet a woman who's never been married, wants kids. Y'all connect. All these things. She wants kids. She wants. To, she's ready to get married. You just got out of a relationship. You're not ready to do that. You just trying to get, you trying to see if you still got it. You just trying to test the waters. You still got the new car smell of this single life. Y'all aren't compatible. Even though you check the first two boxes, you're attracted to each other and y'all connect like crazy. The connection is wild. He's in a different stage of life than she is. She wants kids or he wants kids. She already got kids. Uh, I may have a kid. Uh, we can probably have another... Yeah, I'm not compatible. She got adult children, and you want a, you want legacy. Different stages of life. Obviously, she wanted to have kids, so she got them already. She don't want any more. <laughs> right, right. Oh, uh, he's still willing to relocate for a job, and she's like, "No, I want to stay right here." Yeah. Career. Yeah. Career choices. You can want the same things, but because of where you are in life, you ain't ready for that just yet. So real. You're not compatible. You may be eventually, but you're not right now. And if you're dating with intention, you know what you got to do. You got to string her along. <laughs> <laughs> we got to continue this because I know we got more on your list. Well, we got a guest coming up the next time. Man, he'll handle himself. <laughs> okay. It doesn't mean we can't continue. We're, we can't continue. Got, we've got creative freedom here. We do. Yes. We do. Yeah, we're not done. I want to talk about kids. I do too. Family. See, I, I, we, we put a pin in a, a cliffhanger. We put a pin in a family thing. <laughs> right. I had a feeling we weren't going to finish all this tonight anyway. Uh, because there's a lot to, this, again, this is the this is the granddaddy in my opinion. This could, is, could our guests help us finish this list out? No, I want to go this. I want to go at this solo. Okay, okay. I want to go at this solo. Okay, that's fair. So we'll interrupt this series and pick back up later. But we'll 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 have a guest in next time we record. But cool. but you but you you like where we're going with yes, this good conversation? Hundred percent. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Listen, y'all. Thanks again for checking us out. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like button and subscribe to us. Also, if you're watching, listening to this, wherever podcasts are streaming, I guess they still, are you still following people there? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't even know. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Twitter X at the THA Tipping Point. IG, you can also find us there as well. I'm Cesar Walker. He's Ronnie Gatchery. That guy over there is black. With the Tipping Point Podcast, thanks again for checking us out.